Hey guys, this is Ron. This is Lab 18, and we'll be covering NAT. Okay, NAT is Network Address Translation. It is basically what happens on your home router every day to translate your inside private IPs to your outside uh, public IP that the ISP gives you. Okay, so it can be used in that manner, but it it's a tool that you can use for for more than just that you can use it for port forwarding so if I have a web server on the inside of my network uh, but it's on a private IP and I want to give uh, the outside world access to it I can map my uh, basically the my outside IP plus a port number which is called a socket so I can map that socket uh, to the inside of my network to my web server okay but you can use it for uh, you know, like in my scenario here, uh, I have two two PCs that have the same IP address. Okay, maybe it's not a PC, maybe it's just some other piece of equipment, uh, and you have technicians that uh, travel from location to location, and for the uh, to make things easy on them, every time they sit down at this piece of equipment, I want it to be the same exact IP. Okay, and so I'm going to use NAT to make sure that that IP can be used in multiple places throughout my network. Uh, and then I also might run into the scenario that I've combined my network with somebody else and we have some uh, overlapping IPs. Okay, they were using a certain range on their network, I was using the same range on my network, and now either one of us needs to change or we can apply NAT and not have to change anything. So, uh, NAT is typically applied uh, based upon the direction or the purpose that, that you're trying to do it for. So I can do it from the inside of my network out or I can do it from the outside of my network in. So the inside out gives my uh, gives the inside of my network access basically to the outside world. Uh, and on the opposite side, if I'm mapping from the outside in, it might just be because I'm trying to make things easy on people outside of my network to access the inside of my network okay so it just depends uh, in which direction I'm applying it uh, how I'm gonna do some of these commands now there's something called an inside local an inside global an outside local and an outside global and again it goes back to in which direction am I applying that okay if I'm applying it from the inside out, my inside local address is typically the computer down here, okay? And then the inside global is where which address am I mapping it to? And it might be an address out here, okay? So I'm going to map this to an address outside here, or I can map it to an intermediate address, which I've done uh, in some cases because I have a tunnel in between my two routers so I don't have access to these IPs anymore so I'll use an intermediate IP that doesn't quite it's not quite sitting on this uh, LAN here or WAN address but it gives that kind of translation to something that's accessible to the outside network okay uh, and then outside local and outside global so again this is from the outside in and some of these IP addresses might end up being uh, the same. So an outside local probably ends up being what I'm trying to actually access. And then the outside global is the address that people are going to use to get to it. So it might be an address out here or it might be that intermediate address. But, so oftentimes they end up being the same thing, but it's all in the perspective, the outside in or the inside out. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna start off with static NAT, uh, and static NAT is a one-to-one -one mapping. So it's gonna allow me to map this one address down here to one address either out here or in, or in an intermediate range. Okay, uh, and then later on we'll we'll get into some of the other ones. So let's jump in. For the first thing I need to do is define what's the inside and what's the outside. So in my case, this is the inside, this is the outside. So this is fast ether 0, 0. This is fast ether uh, 0, 1. So let's bring up uh, router 2. So we'll do uh, interface FA 0, 0. So we'll do IP NAT outside. Interface FA 0, 1. IP NAT inside. Okay. 
Now let's actually write the the NAT command. So IP NAT. Now we can do this from the inside out or from the outside in, or we can do it with a pool. So in our case, we're going to do a one-to-one -one mapping from the inside. So we'll do inside source. Now I can define a list or I can define a static. Okay, static is again a one to one mapping. We're going to map a local address to a global address. Okay, so I'm going to do static. And now I have to define what is that inside local IP. So in my case, it's 192.168.0.1 and then an inside global address. So this is what I'm going to map it to. So the outside of my network is basically 172.16.0. Uh, router 1 is dot 1, router 2 is dot 2, but I have a 248 subnet mask, so I have a block size of 8. So I have a couple of IPs that I can work with. So I'm going to map it to dot 3. So 172.16.0.3 and just hit enter. Okay, so now I have my mapping. So if I do a show uh, IP NAT translation, you notice I have a local inside local of 192.168.0.1 and I'm mapping it to 172.16.0.3 okay now if I minimize this I'll take care of the other side so on this side we're gonna use an intermediate IP let's say for some reason I don't want to use that uh, outside uh, outside address so I'm going to uh, do show IP interface brief. I'm going to use one of my loopback IPs. So when I defined this loopback, I did 10001, uh, but I gave it a subnet mask of, uh, uh, I don't remember, 248 or something like that. So e either way, I have a couple of extra addresses that I can work with. So I'm going to do 10002. Okay. So the first thing I need to define the inside of my network and the outside of my network. So interface FA 0 slash 1, this is IP NAT inside. Uh, interface FA 0, 0, we'll try this out. Uh, I'm not sure if I have to move the outside down to my loopback. I don't think I have to. I think I could still define it on FA 0, 0, we'll find out. So IP NAT outside. And now we'll actually do the mapping. So IP NAT inside source static. Now we're going to map from 192.168.0.1 and again here we're talking about the global so 10.0.0.2 show IP NAT translation okay so 10.0.0.2.192.168.0.1 so I'm going to do a debug IP NAT okay so NAT debugging is on now I'm going to try to ping from here over to here. So in order to access this computer, I'm using that 172 or 172.16.0.3 address up here. Okay. So bring it up. Do a ping 192.168. Er, correction. 172.16.0.3. Now let's bring up my router and see if it's actually doing any. Uh, translation so we have a source address so this s of 192.168.0.1 is getting translated to 10.0.0.2 destination 172.16.03 alright now coming back in I should start seeing some uh, replies here so notice here uh, source address 172.16.03 replied uh, and it went to destination 10.0.0.2 which I then translated back to 192.168.0.1 okay so if we do a show IP NAT translation now we see all of these entries okay notice all the global IP or these outside IPs are the same and that's because I applied uh, NAT from the inside out not the outside in okay so we had 10.0.0.2 and it basically chose port numbers as it went uh, so it created all these sockets 
as it had to talk to the outside world and map those to the 192.168.0.1 and it also created a couple sockets okay and now they're expiring but what I should see then down here is a bunch of uh, replies so yeah so ARP did its thing and then it started replying okay so that was NAT applied from the inside out and we used an intermediate address okay notice over here it's probably expiring already but show IP NAT translation uh, so they've expired uh, but we should have seen the translations here because I was going from computer to computer so we can bring this back up let me do a ping 10.0.0.2 and I'm getting replies so that's going from here using that intermediate IP over here and hitting here so NAT's happening on both sides um, I'm applying NAT from the inside out on both of these and I'm translating as I go this way and then once I hit here I'm translating again uh, to hit this computer so we should see here show IP NAT translation again my outside addresses are all the same because I'm applying uh, NAT from the inside out and I have I'm mapping all my 192's to that outside uh, 17216 address okay so there you have it there's that is static NAT 